Well, greetings, Mr. Colasar's class. We're going to continue with section 9-1, but now what we're going to do is start looking into how we're going to balance our chemical equations. So a term that we're going to use a lot this year, chemical equations, but let's add in the term in front of there, balanced chemical equations on the top of number 12, and we're going to abbreviate it a lot, B, C, E. So you're going to hear this term a lot throughout the next three chapters. Balanced chemical equations. A statement that describes chemical reactions using chemical formulas to show the relative amounts of each substance and the symbols for each state of matter. So remember our setup reactants on the left, chemical reaction to produce our products. And we need the same amount of each element on both sides of the arrow. It's kind of like an equal sign where whatever we start with, reactants, needs to equal the amount of products we end with. So the law of conservation of mass. Conserve means to keep. So the law of conservation of mass says that it states that mass is neither created nor destroyed during a chemical reaction, but it's conserved. The mass does not change. We can't gain or lose atoms during a chemical reaction, so we need to show what's happening to that material as we're going. So in 14, the amount of matter stays the same, our first key. Um, it has the same number of each element on both sides of the arrow. So an example of this would be aluminum plus bromine produces aluminum bromide, was from our last section as an example. To begin with, we have bromine over on the left. We have two bromines. Whoops, we're going to put that on this side. And on the right, we have three bromines, Br, Al, Br, 3. On the right, we have aluminum. We have one aluminum. And on the right-hand side of the arrow, we have one aluminum. So right now, if we were to look, our aluminums are equal to each other, but the bromines, there's two bromines on one side and three on the other. So every time, what we're saying right now is that if we had two to start with and three, that we're making another bromine atom. We can't do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to add coefficients. Coefficients are going to be numbers placed in front of each substance. They're going to be multipliers. So if we have two on this side and three on this side, one of our hints coming up is lowest common denominator between two and three is six. So what number times two gets us to six? So three times two gets us to six bromines. And on this side, we have three bromines. Three times two will get us to six, but it's also changed the number of aluminums from one to two, two times one. So now our aluminums are not balanced. So in the end, we need to put a two in front. Two times one gets us to two. So our reaction says two aluminums plus three bromines produces two aluminum bromides. So it's a two to three to two ratio. That's the beginning of our balanced chemical equations. So let's get into that a little bit more. So coefficients, those numbers that were placed in front of our substances to balance our chemical equations. Now they're placed in front of each substance. They're whole numbers, and the math they do is multiplication to just that substance. Again, we don't write the number one. We assume that the number one is there, so you don't need to write the number one. So coefficients describe the relative amount of each substance reacting or being produced. It's a ratio, a relative amount. So what we're saying here, the coefficient in front, two waters are going to react to produce two hydrogen gas molecules and one oxygen gas molecule. So it's a two to two, and we don't write the number one. It's there, but we don't write the one. So one oxygen molecule, our relative ratio of each one. So to practice these coefficients, Remember, coefficients are multipliers. So if we have three COs, that multiplier multiplies to how many carbons total we have in the compound and how many oxygens total we have in the compound. So for carbon, 
3 times 1 would end up being, or 1 times 3 would end up being, we'd have 3 carbons and oxygen. We've got 1 oxygen times the 3 in front. We'd have 3 carbons and we'd have 3 oxygens total in the end. Now, on the second one, 4 H2SO4, or we have 4 sulfuric acids. Now that 4 multiplier is multiplied to everybody in the chemical or in the substance. So if we looked at hydrogen, hydrogen we have 2 of times the 4 in front, we would have 8 hydrogens. S, we have 1 sulfur times the 4, we would end up with 4 sulfurs. And oxygen, we have 4 of to begin with times 4, we'd have 16 oxygens in this case. I'll put a little equal sign there so we know that's oxygen. So that's a relative amount, that's how many of each atom we'd have if we have that coefficient multiplier in front. Now for polyatomic, how it's written in parentheses, right now we're showing two oxygens and two hydrogens for each of those. So as we're going our calcium, we have one calcium times two would equal two calciums. We have oxygen, but now our oxygen's already started out. We have one oxygen times the two in parentheses times the two out front. So we end up one times two is two times two. We end up with four oxygen. And finally our hydrogen, 1 times 2 is 2. And then the coefficient 2 in front is 4 hydrogens. So as we're going, what we're looking at is showing the number, relative number of each atom when the coefficient is applied. And our final one, 6 and H4 taken twice, oxygen on the outside. So to begin with, our nitrogen, we have one nitrogen times two. So we'll go to the hydrogen in a second. Times the coefficient six out front. So we end up with 12 nitrogens. Two times four for hydrogen. We start out with four hydrogens times the two from the polyatomic times the 6 out front. In this case, 2 times 4 is 8, times 8 is 48 hydrogens. And our final one, oxygen. We have 1 oxygen. We don't show the number 1, but there's a 1 right there. 1 times 6 gives us 6 oxygen. So we're going to use these coefficients, the numbers in front, to help us start balancing some chemical equations. So to pull this together, a couple things we're going to add in here. First off, steps for balancing chemical equations. We write the skeletal equation, correct formulas for each substance. That's going to be our key part. We've written formulas before. We're going to add coefficients to balance the equations. Balancing usually metals to your nonmetals, to the carbon, oxygen, hydrogen. If you want to, I kind of usually switch these two around. Either way will work, but we'll find out with some of the combustion reactions. Hydrogen, a little bit before oxygen, helps out. And then add this one in. If a polyatomic is present on both sides of the reaction, kind of treat it as a single unit. It's going to help us out as we're going forward, and we'll see that one. And then four, or three, hint, if two and uh, three are on both sides of the reaction, try to get to that number six. That's the lowest common denominator between the two that will help out. So add those two to your notes. So to begin with, we said that when we write a balanced chemical equation, our first step is we're going to start with writing out um, our skeletal structure. So aluminum reacts with copper 2 oxide to produce copper metal and aluminum oxide. So first off, we need copper 2 oxide. So Cu is a plus 2 oxides and minus two, so when we crisscross copper oxide, CuO. 
and aluminum oxide. Aluminum is a plus 3, oxide a minus 2. So if we crisscross those, aluminum oxide, Al2O3. So to write this out, aluminum solid reacts with copper oxide solid to produce copper and we'll just break that apart aluminum oxide so when we look at this we're going to write numbers in front as coefficients so to begin with our first part is if we were to look how many aluminums do we have on each side of the arrow? So we have one aluminum over here, two over here. Coppers, we have one over here, one over here. Oxygens, we have one oxygen to begin with on this side and three to begin with on this side. Now, to look at balancing those two, we're going to start out with the oxygens in this case instead of our metals because as we're going, if we just put a two here, then it's not going to affect our oxygen or anything else. So if we have one oxygen on the left and three on the right, our first step is we need to get those oxygens balanced. So what number one times what gets us to three? Three times one gets us to three. So now we've changed to three coppers and to three oxygens. So now oxygens are balanced. Coppers still need to be fixed up. We have one copper over here and three on the side. Three times one gets us to three coppers. And on this side, three coppers. Aluminums, one on this side, two on this side. So our last step to get our aluminums balanced, one times two gets us to two. So our ratio says two aluminums plus three copper oxides produces three coppers and one aluminum oxide. Both sides of the reaction have the same number of each element, so in the end we're balanced. 19. Gaseous propane burns in the presence of oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. So propane, remember, prop, organic, three carbons, three times two plus two gets us to our eight hydrogens. Remember that was an organic. In presence of oxygen, oxygen O, but it's diatomic O2. Burns in presence produce carbon dioxide, CO2, and water vapor, H2O. So to write this out, gas is propane, C3H8 plus Oh, gases plus oxygen, O2, in the gaseous state, produces carbon dioxide, also a gas, and water vapor. Since it's vapor, that would be water as a gas. Now, to balance this out, we're going to place those coefficients in front. So, to begin with, we look carbon hydrogen, oxygen. We have three carbons on this side. We have one carbon on this side. Hydrogens, we have eight hydrogens on one side and we have two on the other. And oxygens, we have two on this side and we have oxygen here, O2, plus an oxygen here. So in the end, we have three oxygens, two from here plus one from H2O. So we have three total there. So we can begin balancing anywhere we'd like. So if we wanted to, we could start with the carbons. We have carbon here, we have three, and we have one here. So to get what number times one gets us to three, three times one. So now we've moved to three carbons. That also affects, we've got three times two is six, plus one, we're up to seven total oxygens now. So getting closer to being balanced, our next step is uh, we could either look at the hydrogens and oxygens. Hydrogens, we have eight on this side. 
hydrogens two on the side. So let's go with four times two would get us to eight. Four times two gets us to eight. So we'll just put eight hydrogens down there. So in the end, now that we have eight hydrogens on each side, what we'll look at is our oxygens need to become balanced. So our oxygens, oh, four times two is eight. Four times one is eight also, or is four times one is four, plus the six we had before gets us a total of 10 oxygens. So as we're going, we need to add the total number of oxygens together on that side. So to get us 10 oxygens on this side, 5 times 2 is 10. So 1 propane plus 5 oxygens produces 3 carbon dioxides and 4 waters. So that would be our balanced chemical equation for propane combusting in, a, say, a gas grill. And our last example for balanced and chemical equations, aqueous solution of calcium chloride. So calcium chloride, calcium Ca, chloride minus 1. So when we crisscross, we'll get CaCl2. And silver nitrate, Ag, is plus 1. NO3, polyatomic is a minus 1. So crisscross, 1 and 1's just drop out. Are mixed and produce two products. One is a white precipitate, meaning it's a solid of silver chloride. Silver Ag Cl plus 1 minus 1. So they just cancel out also. And the other is the aqueous calcium nitrate. Calcium is a plus 2. Nitrate NO3 minus 1. So when we crisscross, we end up with Ca NO3 in parentheses twice. So to write this formula out, to begin with, what we're going to do is calcium chloride, CaCl2, and it's aqueous. Aqueous means dissolved in solution. Plus, as we're going, silver nitrate, AgNO3, which we said also was aqueous, dissolved in solution, is going to produce white precipitate, silver chloride, AgCl, which is a solid, plus our other material, aqueous calcium nitrate, CaNO3, taken twice, which is also aqueous. So to balance this one, coefficients, numbers we're going to place in front. So our calciums, our chlorines, our silvers, and our last one, we're going to keep the NO3, a polyatomic, if it appears on both sides, here and over here, we're going to keep it together. So we have, to begin with, one calcium, one calcium, two chlorines to one chlorine, one silver to one silver, one nitrate to two nitrates. So to start us out, we need to start out, we can start anywhere we want. Um, calciums aren't balanced. So on this side we have two, the side we have one. One times two gets us to two chlorines, and we've also changed the number of silvers to two. So if we look back over on this side, we have one silver to two silvers, one nitrate to two nitrates. So one times two changes us to two. And that two, we have two NO3s. We're just going to keep that polyatomic together to two. So in the end, one calcium, two chlorines, two silvers, two nitrates. So in the end, as we're looking here, one calcium chloride plus two silver nitrates produces two silver chlorides and one calcium nitrate. We'll let you continue starting to balance some problems out, making sure that we have the same number of each type of atom on both sides of the reaction.